Welcome to the Smart Construction webinar series. Uh, today's webinar will be talking about the Connect to IMC 2.0 Dozer technology uh, through our customer experiences. My name is Pat Munro. I'm the business unit manager for construction dozers, uh, graders, special application, and uh, government business. Our agenda today, we are going to be discussing the IMC 2.0 range, the five IMC dozer models. Uh, the IMC 2.0 features at a high level, then our customer experience uh, with Entracon Civil in Victoria, some contractors in New South Wales. And then towards at the end, we'll have a live panel uh, with Sam, the operations manager from Entracon Civil, and uh, Aidan McPherson from McPherson Contractors. <clears throat> First of all, our one series, uh, looking at our IMC one series dozers, uh, these dozers are ranged from an 18 and a half ton to a 24 ton size. You can see that they're basically the same, just one's bigger than the other. Now these one series machines, they're a hydrostatic drive with a super slant nose and a pat blade only. They have the cooling pack at the rear, allowing the cabin to be moved forward putting the operator into a more comfortable central position for better vision and comfort. These are generally used on project uh, type work with and, and final trimming. As you can see on the D61, we have two models, the EX, which has a 3.25 metre blade, uh, 610 shoes, and then the PX has a wider blade at 3.86 metres and 860 shoes for lower ground pressure. Our D71 model, we have three models in this range. First of all, the EXI, a 3.8 metre blade with 610 shoes. The PXI has a 4 metre blade uh, width. And in this model, we have our 3M folding blade, which has been really helpful because you can fold the blades to under three metres so you can float them around and not require a pilot which saves, saves costs for your transport from site to site. This model has a 760 wide shoe. Then we also have a PXI-24 wide, which is our very wide undercarriage and wide blade at 4.3 metres wide blade and nine 15 shoes, which gives us a very low ground pressure machine. Interesting, interestingly, approximately 70% of, of the Australian construction market uh, utilise this 18 to 24 tonne size machine. Our D71 model falls right into this class with the highest power to weight ratio, making it a great package. Then I'd like to go on to our five series range. And as you can see here, sorry, as you can see here, the starting with the D65 model and then the D85 and the 155. These all have three, uh, these three models all have torque converter drive and external push arm blades only, ranging from 23 tonne to 42 tonne. They're generally used for bulk heavy duty work with the ability to cut or fill to design first time every time. They have a low track undercarry system that gives approximately one third less wear. The, cub the cabin is also able to be put into a lower position to give the operator a more central position for better vision and more comfort during the rough, rough riding application. In the five series machines, the D65 model falls into that very popular 24 tonne range that the industry utilise. <coughs> Sorry, the D, D65, we have two models. You've got the EX with a semi U or the Sigma blade as an option at the 610 shoes. The PX is our low ground pressure machine with a straight tilt dozer blade and 915 shoes. The D85, we have two models here. The EX, again, with a, it's a 30 tonne machine, semi U blade or the Sigma as an option with 660 shoes. Our PX is a slightly lighter machine with a straight tilt dozer and the 915 shoes for low ground pressure. They all have, those two units have the IMC 2.0 technology. 
And D155AXI-8 is IMC 1.0. It's the D155AXI-8. It's a 4142 tonne machine. Semi-U blade, the Sigma is an option, or you can have the rear rippers with single joint ripper or multi-shank ripper on 610 shoes. Moving forward to some of the IMC features that I'd like to just touch on. First of all, the proactive dozing control. This allows your op uh, a green operator to operate like a pro. When, when the operator tracks the machine over an area to be stripped, leveled or filled, the dozer records that has built surface. From this, the operator can fill or strip material like a pro, as you can see here in our visual. The machine on the right has an inexperienced operator with a 2.0 turned on and you can work very smoothly. On the other side, it's a manually operated machine and it's, depending on their experience, you can get sort of waving. So proactive allows a green operator to, to operate very skillfully. The tilt steering control. When the operator's in heavy cutting application, the dozer will tend to pull left or right, depending where the load is. With the tilt steering control, the dozer will tilt the blade without going below the design surface to help maintain the straight travel, as you can see in the visual. The next feature that I'd like to discuss is the lift layer control. This automatically spreads the fill from existing terrain and measures the terrain as it tracks over that plane and also plans the next pass to maximise the compaction material. The quick surface creation, it's a two-step process. The operator puts the blade on the ground, then they'll press the shortcut button and OK. That'll create a temporary design surface. This allows the operator to strip or spread material whilst waiting for a surface model to work to. Now we'll cross over to our video uh, from and hear from our customers. Thanks, Anna. G'day, my name's Sam Spicer. I'm the operations manager for a company called Entrecon Civil. Entrecon Civil's been around for 20 years, mainly a civil based company working in the water space, uh, doing lots of wetlands, civil construction. Behind us is our new Komatsu D71, featuring the Intelligent Machine Control 2.0. We're at one of our sites in Melbourne today. This site's got a waterway, two wetlands with it, and some noise walls. Um, the dozers here have been instrumental in the clay filling, topsoiling, and trimming of the, the wetlands. For us, adding the D71 that was a no-brainer. It's large size means it can push bulk fill, move plenty of fill for the day, but it's also got the capabilities of being able to do final trim. The technology in this machine makes it much easier to train up new operators. Someone that doesn't have as much experience can be nearly final trimming as an operator that's been driving a machine for a very long time. For me as the operations manager, the intelligent machine control means that I can sit back in my office and see what the machine's been doing for the day. I can see what it's been pushing, where it's been pushing, fuel consumption. I can even see if the operator's been wearing their seatbelt. One of my favourite features on this machine is the tilt steering control, which allows the operator to push a windrow out while the machine just keeps a straight track the whole time means less fatigue for the operator and also has an automatic lift function which is just a one push on the screen and we can lift the layer of material as we go as well which makes things nice and easy and layers are getting put down to the correct levels. With Matsu's Smart Construction Support Centre we can ring them up, get help straight away, they can even jump online, put on our computer, fix any plans we're having problems with and tell us about any issues we're having and we can fix them on the spot which makes a huge benefit to our company. Uh, for Entrecon, bringing this new technology into the company has been fantastic. We can see exactly where the machine's going, we get a reading back in the office, working with Komatsu's smart construction platform as well. We get a 3D model every single day of what we've done and where we're going, and we just keep pushing forward every day knowing we're heading in the right direction. Now we're going to cross over to New Zealand to hear from our customers, McPherson's, and their experiences with their IMC dozers. I'm uh, Bob Hasty. I'm uh, one of the two current workshop managers here at uh, McPherson Contractors out of Matamata. In 97, McPherson Contractors was formed and we've been in business here in, in Matamata and the Greater Waikato and the Bay of Plenty since. 
the main work that McPherson's do is a, a lot of this work that we've got here is uh, subdivisions. We do a lot of um, rural contouring. Uh, this is a um, subdivision just on the outskirts of Matamata. Um, it's about a 45 lot um, subdivision. Um, it's a cut and fill process to get the sections up to height. So this is uh, McPherson's second IMC2 dozer. Um, it's D61 PXI-24, the latest in Part 2 technology. Um, we've always needed an extra dozer and we're taking on some bigger jobs now that needed a bit bigger machine so it just goes well with our 2D51s as well. So the new do dozer was purchased not only for here but for our ongoing work. Looking to the future we, we found that we needed to have another mid-range mid IMC dozer. We chosen to go with Kamatsu because Stephen McPherson, the boss, he, uh, he had the product since uh, the late 90s. He's had Kamatsu ever since. Uh, the product is good and uh, we found that now with the IMC machines it's giving us uh, a competitive advantage and especially when we combine it with the smart construction and the drone survey. The tractor and scoops place the dirt in layers and then the dozer's doing the trimming, the final trimming, so that's where it's um, mostly used for all the final trimming and prepping of the roads and um, subgrade. When they push uh, a lot of material in front of the blade and the machine drifts to one end, uh, the steering on that, uh, say, drift to the left, the steering uh, tilt will, will look in on the left and then force the machine straight, so it, it pushes in a straight line. What we've found as well is it's um, taking a lot of rework out of it. Um, we're finding we're doing things once and doing it right, um, and it's also helping with the new guys coming through with less experience. It's just helping them um, pick up a bit quicker. We chose to go with, with IMC because we find that we can take uh, just average operators and make them into good operators. And that uh, there's a competitive efficiency there and we're finding that we can uh, reduce our costs quite considerably. Yeah, we've found um, it's hard to, these days to get experienced operators with final trim skills. So um, with the IMC, it's just helping um, the new generation come through and, and get a real fine final trim with um, you know with a bit less experience. Mostly by uh, in conjunction with the IMC with the 3D modelling that we find that when we import materials we can put it exactly where it's going to go and when we're excavating we can take it to where it needs to go next and therefore only touching everything once. The benefits for us is just that competitive advantage that we find that just most of our operators now can come into a site and just, just go straight to it. They level off quick, they can do it at speed. We use the drone um, application quite a bit with smart construction. We use it a lot for our estimation and pricing and um, calculating volumes and that sort of thing. So that's one thing we're going to get into a bit more of. Today I'll be doing a drone survey for McPherson. I do that mainly once a month for them and they calculate volume between the last month and this month uh, for the end of the month claims. And that gives us a good look at everything that's on any site and where we've got to do most of our work. I'm not sure, but I don't think even think that Stephen get any surveys these days on site. It's, it's between the drone surveys and, and the machines. Only uh, survey cost alone will, will save him a, a ton of money. We also have a quick surface creation, so that's quite a neat feature. So the quick surface uh, creation is um, one thing we use quite a lot with, with all our machines, the IMC machines. Um, sometimes on site the design might not work on site, we may need to adapt on site so you know we, we can punch in a, a flat plane or a 1% cross wall and it helps with the um, environmentals and that sort of thing if we need drains to fall to the right places it just helps. Yeah the remote access is really good because um, sometimes we find ourselves in the, in the office away from the site at times and the guys ring up with the problem we can um, remote in and see what they're doing, see what the issue is. We can do that from the office and not have to go out to site, so that's really handy. We see the IMC uh, as the way to the future. We run the best dozers in the world. And we're trying to be um, efficient and, and productive in what we do, so we can offer a, a good result for the clients that we, we have. Right.
Thanks. Feedback there, Emma. No, all good. Uh, thanks, Aidan and uh, Sam, for, for uh, joining us there today. That's right. Ask you guys uh, a couple of questions from a customer's point of view. Uh, in uh, your video, you mentioned that uh, the IMC makes it a little bit easier to onboard some uh, new dozer operators. Um, how have you found that the IMC product has helped you here? Oh, well, it makes a massive difference to us. Yeah, you know, the guys can uh, pretty much final trimming nearly straight away, especially with the auto function on. Um, you know, things putting levels down to the correct level. You know, and the machine's pretty much driving itself with level wise to keep things going at a at a good rate. Everything's going in, levels are going in at the right depths. Then it's only then the operator then just has to concentrate on where the dirt's going. It's pretty much the only thing they've got to worry about. So it's it mainly gives them so much more confidence to know that they're putting in, in straight away, they're doing the right stuff, they're trimming correctly. They just keep you know, they just get more and more confidence so much quicker we've been finding. Yeah, okay. And Aidan, have you had a similar experience in New Zealand? Yeah, yeah, I would largely agree with that. We um we've onboarded guys that have never never driven a dozer before and, and like Sam says, uh, straight away doing the final trim and um yeah, like all of that concentration that they would otherwise be putting into that, they can put into working out how to attack the job so that they can do it more efficiently and that's that's far better use of their their time and their thinking than than oh you know where's the level and am I am I getting this flat and smooth so it's um yeah it's, it's hugely beneficial. And Aidan, I'm um, noticed on the New Zealand video that there was some discussion around that you, you can use these from bulk earthworks to final trimming. Um, do you find that this may allow you to potentially not have a grader on site? You, can you use these machines for, for that function? Yeah, well, we've we've largely not done a lot of our work with um, with graders anyway. Um, a, a lot of the final trim was actually um, was just done by eye with a motor scraper, um, and now there's a there's far more expectation from engineers now that they're doing detailed designs that you that everything is within a smaller tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, so we're finding now that um, you know. In, in the early days, we were doing a lot more trimming with diggers, and we're we're actually able to get away from a lot of that now because it's it's painfully slow and and trim everything with bulldozers. Um, on a lot of the subdivision work that we do, the house sites are too tight to to even consider doing with a grader anyway. So the bulldozer is the perfect tool for the job um, to work in small areas, and but still achieve the, the final grade quickly. Yeah, yeah. and Sam, do you have similar or slightly different experience there? Oh, no, no, very similar. We're, we're finding it, you know, an advantage is where we can use a larger dozer to trim with now. Um, so where we would have, you know, maybe, a, you know, you know, D51, at, you know, what are they, 14 ton or whatever they are. Now we're using a 24 ton dozer to do the same sort of thing. So we're getting the bulk push out of them. We can push everything out of the way and then final trim with those bigger machines now it's with the IMC is just you know they're, they're trimming as good as the small doses used to so that's where our, yeah. our main difference is. Excellent as a I'll go to, to Sam first on here as a as a rough percentage um, do you have a, a sort of feeling for what a, what a, how much of an efficiency improvement that the IMC may have been able to give you for your finishing of the job? Uh, yeah as a rough, it'd have to be at least fifty percent more efficient all all the time. It's saving you know someone checking it, um, yeah, especially with the smart construction side of it. You know, I can get it to get on the computer, check where it's, if they're at finish level, put it over a model straight away. So when they tell me that they've finished trimming something, I can check it straight away. So that's saving having just not even just in machine cost, but it's saving you have someone on the ground checking what's going on everywhere, making sure things are right. What I'm getting told are getting trimmed and are finished are. Um, yeah, you know, and especially you know when it, when it's trimmed and finished, and you know we get a, a big rain event and something gets flooded and you can't get on it for a while, yeah, you know, we can just get back onto the laptop now and just check where the dose has been and if that was at level and if we have to go back in there again. So mm -hmm. yeah, it'd have to be at least fifty percent, Pat, if not more. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and Aiden, do you have a, sort of a rough number there that would 
it's hard to put a rough number on it but i think re realistically the the biggest thing is that we're not um yeah the guys aren't just getting it pretty close to you know we used to use pegs and you know um you'd have to go around and check and, and now we don't even need to bother with pegs we know that the machine's been over it and it's been trimmed to grade and you um and you don't have to go back again which is mm -hmm. which is which is awesome and and like um like you were saying the um if, if we get a bit of rain then um you don't want to be going back somewhere twice that extra little bit of rework can sometimes cost you weeks of a project because um because you everything's wet and you've got to try and fumble your way back into somewhere you've already been and now you don't so so uh, that's where the big savings are. Excellent, excellent. Sam, um, on the video mention about the auto lift function when you're layering material out, I find that that uh, allows you guys to allow for the compaction on layers. Yeah, it does, and you know, mainly for the compaction layers. You know, it's obviously as the you know video says, it's a one touch. So when you put one layer in, just touch the button again, up you come again, another layer, and that's you know for you know different times for dirt for our point of view is you know how how thick you can put it in for compaction and what you're doing depending on the material um so for that it makes it it makes it so easy and perfect every single time we're getting consistent compaction readings because the dirt's going in at the same level all the time um so yeah from the ground up it makes it easier yeah and uh aiden on the when you get the dozer dozers it delivered to you to side is it is it hard to have them set up to obtain accuracy um, uh, no, it's generally just a um, a two minute check. We have a um, we have a post or a, a date and mark on the ground that's fixed for the duration of the job. We set that up when we set the site up, and um, and the machine they they check on it um, on on it once a week, and um, and we just carry on. So it really doesn't take any time out of your um, out of your day or your week at all to um, to check that it's right. After the yeah. initial setup of the base station, we, we run all of our um, all of our sites off a of base station because it's more reliable than the network um, in a lot of the rural areas we work in. So um, yeah, once that initial setup's done, there's really nothing to it. Yeah, Sam, did you have anything in in your experience in that space? No, that's the same. We mainly run through the network on the jobs we are at the moment, though, with our dozers. Um, but we're, we're the same thing. It's just to check. We have a you know a spot where the dozer can check every you know once a week, every, whatever it may be, and then every now and again in some in some tricky areas, we might just get a you know a rover out with it and check either side of the blade that we're that we're right on target. Um, and that might be a once a week thing as well, or just maybe a certain area, but um, very easy. Yeah. Um, Sam, there's on the machines with the two point um, with your experience, have you seen an improvement with regard to working on slopes at quite steep batters and the like? Oh, definitely. You know, now having the dual antennas, um, that's making all, all the difference, really. So, um, you know, it makes the setup easier. The, it's, you're getting readings back much quicker now as well. Um, the, the two antennas make the difference. Yeah. And uh, I got here yeah, one final thing to discuss, I suppose, Aidan. With the advantage of these IMC components now being integrated into the machines from the factory, um, has that what sort of uh, improvements or benefits has that given you as a company with these integrated systems? Yeah, well, I guess we've we've got a few. We don't have any in the bulldozer fleet, but in the excavators, we've got um, bolt-on aftermarket GPS systems. And the main problem you have is that there hasn't been the same level of thought go into and and there's, it's not possible to to protect and to um to integrate it quite as well as you can from the factory which means there's just far more possibility for 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 damage and for for things not to work as they're supposed to and um yeah so it's just nice you just, you just don't have yet yeah, things tacked on afterwards it's all been thought about at the construction phase and it's um it's all protected and and works as it should and and you only have one person to ring you don't mm -hmm. have to ring you know this person for this component and that person for that component but there's something wrong with your digger or your bulldozer you ring Komatsu and they um they come out and sort it out you know 
Yeah, and seeing, <clears throat> um, I'll throw over to yourself as well with the integrated systems. How, how's that? Yeah. Been? Yeah, well, the benefit for us is just, you know, the time saving in the morning, setting the machine up. You don't have to put all the antennas, receivers, everything on. It's ready to go. Um, you know, theft is just another thing you don't have to worry about. And then the other major thing is, you know, you get a guy that's sick, doesn't turn up for a day, send him to another site, and he's got the GPS in his car. Um, so you don't have that problem anymore. It's all there. Um, you know, so that, that machine works on that site and it's ready to go. Yeah, I noticed on your video the... the your was just carrying the monitor. It was very easy to put on. And yeah, really, really quick and simple to set up anyway. The monitor we take out, um, but, you know, it, it can stay on site quite easy where, you know, the antennas, you don't want to leave them on site for theft and so, and so on. But, um, it, it, you know, it, it's very easy to set up. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'll just check with Anna to see if there's been any questions uh, coming from the audience and, and we can hopefully do our best to answer those. And... Uh, if not, we can. I can take some notes and get back to those people. But Anna, did you have any questions coming in? Yeah, thanks, Pat. So as you see, we're going to go to some of the questions from the audience. Just a reminding um, everyone, you can still submit your questions in the panel box. So a question that's come through is, uh, do you see any difference with the technology on the one version to the two version of the dozer? Um, for me, visually, I guess it's the twin antennas. Uh, I see 1.0 <laughs> antennas. Um, Sam, have you got some thoughts in there initially? Yeah, it's the same. The, the dual antenna makes a massive difference, and and some of the new features that you know the one touch lift control um, is is really handy for filling, um, and all the other functions are, are so much better as well than than the. Uh, the 1.0, you know, it, it is just making it life so much easier. Yeah. I understand you guys have mainly 1.0 in your fleet and you've recently had a 2.0 delivered. So have you seen anything in the early stages that sees the difference in these two? Uh, not yet, but I, I'm looking forward to um, to seeing what we can get out of it. Um, yeah, we, we mostly run um, more experienced operators and, and the new 2.0s that we've got. So um, I guess they're a bit more reluctant to use the, the new uh, the features because they want to they want to drive the machine themselves. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to, to put someone in who doesn't have that experience and see see what gains they can get from from these machine, this machine functionality. Excellent, terrific. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, is there any further questions there, Anna? We can... Yeah, so another one is, um, can you uh, give any information around the pricing of the dozers? So uh, generally what we do there is is um, every application and, and requirement is slightly different um, and the prices will vary accordingly. So what we'd like to do with the guys um, that are interested in that is certainly get our account managers to be in touch with you and, and um, come and have a discussion about your requirement and what you need and um, and set up a solution that's um, satisfactory for your application. Okay, cool. Uh, so another question is, is the hardware still built by Topcon and can other brands of hardware still be integrated? So the issue, the answer, the, the hardware now uh, there is a, in the 1.0 there was a link with the Topcon and the factory integrated it's a Komatsu system and there, I have, have seen dozers out there that have our IMC uh, integrated technology on the machines and also an aftermarket system put on so the answer to that short answer is yes it can be done I have seen it personally Okay, cool. And another one um, I've received. So, uh, guys, I think you've answered this a bit in your um, the videos, but the question is: COVID has changed the way we do business. Um, has the IMC dozer helped you guys with recruitment or any fluctuating staff numbers? Um, well, from our point of view, with having new dozers and you know it's getting out a little bit on social media, you put a photo of it up. We're definitely getting more phone calls for people wanting to try these new machines. That's that's for sure. Um, but it's also making it easier. We, you know, we've we've just trained up a guy on the dozers, 
um, from in our fleet that have been with us for a while, um, and they just wanted to change with dozer. So they weren't predominantly dozer drivers to start off with. Um, they were, you know, driving uh, excavator operators and so on, but they, you know, they wanted to get on these machines. So our guys have been recruited up within, but we definitely had a little bit of, um, you know, messaging and emailing and so on, trying to trying to see if there's jobs available. Mm -hmm. And Aidan, did you have anything? Yeah, I think I think it's much the same. Just you can get guys with little or no experience in a bulldozer, and um, and you can get some reasonable productivity out of them almost straight away. Mm -hmm. And um, and like a, if you've got a good operator with an IMC machine, you can get so much done that you often don't need that extra machine on site to assist. So you know there's there's advantages there being more productive. You need less people, which is. I guess it's going to be helpful going forward, keeps your costs down as well. That's 100% the same for us as well. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, guys. Um, yeah, Anna, back to you. If there's any more? Yeah, um, another question is, does Komatsu offer the hardware needed to run the machines, like base stations, et cetera? Um, we, yeah, we certainly have uh, a solution uh, that we can we can give the customers uh, in that space, definitely. We we get our smart construction teams, our TAs to go to site and uh, and work out the best solution that fits them, yes, for sure. Oh, awesome. Okay, so that concludes the questionnaires in our webinar today. So thank you, Aidan and Sam, for joining us. And to everyone for attending, we hope you enjoyed the webinar. So if anyone had any other questions, there will be a survey coming out after this presentation, so feel free to um, send through questions there. An email will also come through about 24 hours where you're able to access the recording of this webinar. So thank you everyone for joining um, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.